Hello, I'm sitting here with Edward Luce, who's the author of one of my favorite books, maybe my favorite book, on modern India. So I thought I'd just ask him a few questions about Indian economic prospects. So let's start with a very simple question. You know, should we be pessimists about Indian economic prospects for the short run, medium, the long run? Uh, what do you think on that since having written your book? I think the short run, I'd share the widespread pessimism that people have. Um, but it's very, very hard to be pessimistic in the medium long run with India. If you see the uh, demographics of the country and you assume growth doesn't completely disappear, that this is therefore a positive force, um, and you look at the demographics of China, it's very hard to imagine India not, not powering ahead, having higher savings rate, higher working, higher investment rates, therefore, and higher growth rates. Catastrophe could upset this. Um, but it would have to be pretty catastrophic. Thank you. Let me just push on the case for pessimism for a bit. You have growing population in South Asia, possibly climate change problems, agricultural productivity has been slow. In most countries that make big leaps forward, you see it starting first in agriculture. And India doesn't really fit that model. So basically, how are they going to feed everyone, even if you're seeing income gains in a lot of classes of the population? That's a very good question. I mean, there's been a lot of talk about the need for another um, um, a green revolution, another great leap forward in terms of agricultural productivity. I think, though, that it's very hard to see where that's going to where that's going to come from without some kind of rationalisation of land ownership. You're going to have to allow people to own larger plots of land. You're going to have to make land ownership easier, title deeds easier. Um, the unique identification authority of India, which is, as you know, issuing a unique biometric card to everybody, believes that all sorts of um, uh, ownership issues and identity issues can be sorted out once the system's in place, and there's about another year before it's fully in place, and that people are really underestimating just how transformative it could be, for example, in the agricultural land market. Um, so, you know, you've got to hope for that kind of unexpected change because there's nothing in terms of the conventional policy approaches from New Delhi to suggest a big agricultural revolution is, is around the corner. So if we're looking for two or three variables that people would look at to try to see how India is doing in the short and medium run, or news items or, or indicators, what is it that people should look at actually to get a sense of where India is headed? Um, one, one of them, I think, would be on the political plane, which is looking at the viability of Narendra Modi, uh, the chief minister of Gujarat, because there is a great deal of exasperation now, really tangible, amongst the Anglophone middle classes, and of course way beyond that, but amongst the elite opinion formers with the, the low caliber of politicians, of governance in all forms, and there's a great deal of um, admiration for almost every aspect of Narendra Modi's administration, barring a very, very important elephant in the room, his communal, um, his communal attitude. Um, I would look um, at um, relations with um, Pakistan um, as a, a, huge, a huge important variable, and this has been underappreciated given Pakistan's behavior more generally the degree to which it is becoming a responsible neighbor, and India has been a man Mohan Singh in particular has been successful at um, incentivizing Pakistan to become a more responsible neighbor. Trade, you know, access to the Indian market, trade opening and so forth. Um, Narendra Modi, of course, wouldn't necessarily be particularly good for that scenario. Um, and I would look at the continued rate of what some people call brain circulation, but I think is, is right to call reverse brain brain drain going back to India, which has paused in the last year or two, uh, I understand anecdotally, because uh, the, the growth has slowed considerably. I would look at that as a really good advance indicator of, of future Indian growth, pro of me short to medium term Indian, uh, Indian growth prospects. Uh, thank you for that. Oh, that, this is impressive. That's Edward Luce speaking from late 2012. For further reading, I very much recommend his book, in spite of the gods, the rise of modern India, and for his more recent writings, just Google Edward Luce India and you'll come up with plenty. Thank you for listening, and thank you, Edward. Thank you very much, Tyler.